I'm exhausted. We've had nothing but celebrities around here today, and now we've got Marco Rubio, wow. who is running for president of the United States. It's great to have Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, you got Thanks a package the other day. Uh, you didn't even know this. That my, that I Donald, found out about it this morning. Donald, I read about it Donald somewhere. Donald Trump said, thinks you uh, sweat too much and drink too much. Yeah. So he said drink you too much water. Drink water. too much water. Okay. Yeah, that's clear about that. Hey, so what came in this package? They said it was. I didn't see it. So oh. it's water. I heard it's very high quality water. Apparently, Evian are a bunch of losers. It's really good <laughs> water. So, uh, and then he's got a towel. How do you, how do you feel? about that and he also talks about how young you are yeah well I don't know I mean it is what it is it's about the water yeah I drink water so what I mean so um and I only sweat when it's hot it's and that stage was really hot. It's fall. It's yeah, fall, so it'll start working around. All right, let's talk a little bit about politics. Uh, Hillary Clinton yeah. has uh, just released her gun plan. She's, she, if she's elected president of the United States, she would probably use executive action to close the gun show loophole. To many, it looks like she's just politicizing a tragedy. It's, well, it is, and that's what happens every time there's one of these tragic shootings. And the truth is, none of these laws they're talking about would have, would have prevented any of these. I repeat what I always say to people, gun laws are only followed by law-abiding people. Criminals don't follow the law, that's why they're criminals. And we don't know a lot about this latest instance and all the, what was wrong with this individual in particular, but we know there are two things. One is this violence that's going on because our society is going through some real tumult, and the other is mental illness. Again, these laws would not have prevented some of the recent shootings. These are not assault rifles, these are handguns. And, um, and so again, I mean, every time there's one of these things, instead of examining why are people doing this, immediately they want to focus on what they used to commit this crime. What about gun-free zones? Where do you see on that? A lot of people see them as bullseyes, that they're just targets for someone uh, like this person yeah. who went out and with this latest Well, shooting. I've never seen a house where someone puts a sign up saying, we don't own a gun. I see people put up signs saying, we have an alarm system, we have sure. a dog, but no one ever advertises that they're that they're vulnerable. And I think sometimes, unfortunately, when you advertise that a place is vulnerable, it becomes, I'm not saying in this particular instance, but it becomes potentially a magnet for someone to say, that's the ideal place for me to commit a crime. What do you want people to come away from this segment that they say about Marco Rubio and guns after in light of the last few incidents that we've had? That I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment, that every American has a constitutional right to be able to protect themselves, and that the only reason why they wouldn't are because they're a criminal or because they're mentally ill and therefore could hurt someone. But Americans have a second Second Amendment right to be able to protect their families. And if you pass a law that makes it hard to do that, law abiding people will not have guns, right. but criminals still will. All right. At the second Republican debate, you mm -hmm. accurately predicted weeks before it actually happened that uh, Rush, Russia's uh, Putin was going to bomb the people we are allied with in Syria. What is his end game there? Well, a couple end games. One, he's trying to distract from Ukraine and get the world not to focus on what's happening there, in particular with the end of the ceasefire and all these things. And it also makes him popular in Russia to show that he's a global leader. But the bigger issue, and you're seeing it happen already, he will specifically continue to target non-ISIS rebels, especially the ones America has backed. And the point is, once he can destroy all the non-ISIS rebels, then the argument to the world will be, look, the only people left in Syria is either ISIS or Assad, and you, you might as well be on Assad's side. And so he wants to eliminate any non-ISIS alternative to Assad. So you're going to see him continue to specifically target American-backed rebels. The president said on Friday in an extraordinary press conference when asked that the Russia is attacking and doing these things out of weakness. Yeah, he's wrong. It's not out of weakness. He's doing it because he senses a vacuum. And he can position himself as a geopolitical equal to the United States, perhaps even a superior in the case of the Middle East. The argument he is making to the Middle East and the broader world is this president in America under this president right. is weak and unreliable. We right. are strong and consistent. But, okay. Senator, I just got to say that there's a lot of people at home going good. I don't want any part of the Middle East. I'm fed up. They're ungrateful for what we've sacrificed, and we have sacrificed an awful lot. And what do we get from it? Let them have it. What's your reaction, problem, including Donald Trump? Okay, and the problem with that view is that they're not going to ignore us, even if we ignore them. That instability in Syria has led to the rapid growth of this group called ISIS that people may have heard about, that group wants to attack us here at home. And they use these operating spaces that they've gained in that area to, to plan for attacks against us and to recruit Americans on social media to attack us. So just because we ignore them, they will not ignore us. They will come for us eventually. In fact, they already are trying to. Wow, incredible. Well, from geopolitical positioning to parenting, yeah. we got a good look. John Roberts actually uh, <laughs> took to the traveling with you, and we got to see you as a father, as a coach with your kids at football, and your wife actually spilled the beans on how you proposed. Watch. I was a big fan of Secrets in Seattle. The movie. Right, the movie. And, um, and Marco, knowing that, decided, well, let me propose to her in the same way that she loves his favorite movie. So sure enough, we went to New York, and he took me up to the Empire State Building, and he proposed to me there.
I oh man, it you was cold. are. <laughs> it, was You're cold. Romantic. it was Valentine's Day and it was cold. And I remember I gave her the ring and then I asked her, I said, Can I just hold it till we get downstairs? Because somehow it had stuck in my head she might drop it over the side <laughs> of the Empire State Building and I couldn't afford a second ring. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. That's we like also saw you coaching there. Yeah. What, what role do you play? I mean, there's a difference when you coach and I could sense that you, know, you had no idea even on camera after a while you were so into the game. Yeah. What does well, that mean to you? Uh, I love to it. Coach I mean, it's probably been ping and ball in my kid's life, but I, I know it's controversial on some people's minds. But I love football. I think it's one of the great teachers of life lessons, right? Of and course. you learn so many things about uh, life and how to persevere. It's not about making it to the NFL or anything like that. It's about uh, using it as a teaching tool to instill certain values and, and habits in, in my kids and, and in other kids that I have an influence over as well. Mm -hmm. right, so your kids have good hands. Where do they get that from? <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't drop anything. Yeah. yeah, well, they do. They'll get hit in the face. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Senator, there's, uh, there's a debate that has uh, been raging on Reddit, uh, the website, where uh, they reached out to married men. What was going through your mind when you saw your wife walking up the aisle at you. For instance, uh, some one guy said, okay, he was saying to himself, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Somebody else was saying, my mind was racing between, I hope she doesn't trip, and why isn't she crying as much as me? <laughs> and someone or, else saying I've been making the worst mistake of my life. Do you remember yeah. that day, what was going on in your head? Yeah, it was like, Good, she, she, she showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried I would have this thing about at the last minute she would back out and I would be there in front of all my family and friends and well, no one to get married. Well, so. you proposed on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Did she know it was coming that day? I don't think so. Uh, I, I think we all we both wanted to get married at some point. I don't think she knew it was happening on that day. Right. Are you, do, you still do you still surprise her when it comes to Valentine's Day now or anniversaries? Uh, I try to. Uh, Remind me, our anniversary is coming up, so thanks for the when reminder. When is that? October 17th. Oh, you yeah. better get on it, Senator. I know. <laughs> so there's no doubt about it. When you talk about surging candidates, your name pops up on the list. In terms of the established candidates, people who did politics for a living, mm -hmm. uh, you're the one. What do you think has changed over the last month? Well, I think the campaign is getting more serious. I mean, for whether it's what's happening now in Syria with Russia, some of the other issues we face domestically as a country, voters are starting to tune in to the real uh, issues before America, and that's only going to accelerate now. And I think as the campaign becomes serious about ideas, about right. policy, about the future of America, I feel very strong about our standing in that regard. Donald Trump said yes last week that uh, don't don't make a mistake about it. Marco Rubio and Governor Bush hate each other. They hate each other's guts because you run it against your mentor. Yeah. What's the reality? It's not true. I mean, I have tremendous admiration and affection for Jeb. He's a friend of mine. I'm not running against Jeb Bush. There's a lot of other people running, too. And I'm running for president. Ultimately, the voters are going to decide. And I'm not running against him or anybody else. I'm running because I honestly believe the time has come for this country to turn the page, both in our party and in the country, and elevate a new generation of leadership with ideas that are relevant to the 21st century. That's why I'm running. All right. Well, you're running and you're busy, but you yeah. drop by. Thank you. Catch Thank you, sir. Thank Thanks you for, for having me. Good luck to be with you guys. Good to see you.